In this video, I'll be showing you guys exactly how I progress in my calisthenics journey with as much detail as I possibly can. And I will cover the most important things you should be doing with your training if you want to see more growth. Most people want to get lean, build muscle, or just want to be more athletic and try to create a workout routine that doesn't help them reach their specific goal. There are many workout stretches that work on different things. In calisthenics, it's strength training for isometrics, dynamics for hypertrophy, and endurance, which is self-explanatory. I like to do a mix of isometrics and dynamics with a couple days of cardio. The goal is to train with intention so you can reach your goals faster. That's why I created this video. Besides all the complicated stuff, you need the basics at any level of body weight training. I want to start with one important thing to keep in mind as I get into this video. When I first started, I didn't do push-push splits like I do today because I was focused on building up my strength more than anything. Hypertrophy came as a result of consistency and focused training. Keep in mind I was also running track at this point and much skinnier than I am today. But this forced me to do cardio and strength training at the same time. And no, you will not lose your gains by doing cardio. Though it does depend on what kind of cardio you do. If you're a cross-country runner, you will probably burn way too many calories to gain enough muscle. But you still can build strength. This also meant that I had to change my diet to accommodate for the added training. And I did probably the best thing I could have done for myself at that point and increase my protein intake and calorie intake. Cardio is still a part of my routine today. And when paired with strength training, it's a great way to build endurance and lose that extra fat. I usually do light cardio two to three times a week or intense cardio once or twice. I recommend warming up your wrists and shoulder joints before every single workout. Don't make the same mistake I made of not prioritizing it and having wrist pain down the line. Shoulder and elbow joints are just as important, but you usually target them with the same stretches. That's a topic that needs a full video on its own. Make it a part of your routine before you start your workout to properly warm up your joints and muscles. Or you could implement a quick 15 minute stretching routine every single morning before you start your day, which has helped my mobility a lot. And my mobility was terrible. The first day of my routine consisted of the three base calisthenics exercises. I first started with pull-ups. At first, I could only do about six pull-ups. And I know this is better than a lot of people, but it also helped that I was active. So I went to the next best progression that I could do to build out my strength, rows. I was fortunate enough to have someone guide me, which is why I try to guide as many of you guys as I can today. Quick shout out to my boy Nico who introduced me to calisthenics. From there, I quickly increased my strength and was eventually able to do 10 pull-ups. Next, I would do 10 to 12 dips. And at the start, I could do about 8 dips. But I had a lot more strength with dips than I did with pull-ups. And guys, this is different for everybody. Some people can do more pull-ups, some people can do more dips, some people more push-ups. It just depends on what your strengths are. And you can probably see the trend now. 10 reps is the optimal rep range to build both muscle and strength. Next, I would do 10 push-ups, but I usually went to 15 because this is the easiest exercise out of the three. The progressions for this are knee push-ups and push-up negatives. And for some of you, this would be too easy, so I suggest doing harder progressions and variations like archer push-ups and diamond push-ups and incline push-ups. And I would recommend implementing all three into your workout routine. For legs, volume is necessary if you want to build more muscle. It's very easy to gain strength and explosiveness in your legs with calisthenics, but mass requires more volume than your upper body. You would need to focus on harder exercises like pistol squats to grow them. You don't need to do a crazy amount of volume, you just need to train them at least twice a week. First is step ups on an elevated surface or a chair if you don't have any equipment or a gym membership. These mainly target your quads. Pistol squats. I first started with assisted pistol squats because I liked in the mobility department. Next you have squat jumps, which are also great for explosiveness, and are a harder version of regular air squats. Then finally, lunges, which are an excellent quad and glute exercise. You can also do these with added weight to make them harder. And if you really want to build some lower body mass, you can either use a weighted vest or dumbbells, or both. Before I started taking calisthenics seriously, I did a lot more weighted leg exercises. If you don't have access to weights, I recommend doing two leg days a week and three to five sets in the 10 to 15 rep range, and pick three to four good exercises per session. Some people stay away from weighted leg exercises because it makes it harder to learn some advanced skills like the planche and front lever. I think this is a terrible excuse to not train your legs. Big legs add a lot more weight to your lower body, but your body responds by building more muscle to support the additional weight. Now your workout structure is important if you want to increase your training intensity and volume. I like to do my workouts in circuits, which means switching between different exercises and grouping those in one set. I would do my first set of pull-ups, rest for a minute, then do a set of dips, wait another minute, and then finish off with push-ups. 
and you want to start off with the hardest exercise that you can do. I would then repeat this for a total of 4-5 to five sets. Anything lower than 3 sets is too low and you should do easier progressions. I highly recommend doing this if you have under a year in calisthenics training and want to build insane strength. If you want to learn a new skill, you should focus on that skill first while you still have the most energy and then finish off with the other exercises. For example, if you want to learn the handstand, you can do 5 sets of handstand holds then 3 sets of pike push-ups. After that, you can then get into the rest of your workout, like your pull-ups, dips, and push-ups. And you can do this with any skill you're trying to learn, whether it's pull-ups or the planche. If you're trying to learn a skill, you should focus on exercises that are related to the skill first, before anything. Circuit training would not be optimal in this case, because you're wasting too much energy doing other exercises. You want to focus on strength sets. And I don't think I have to mention the importance of rest and recovery, right? You guys should already know that. If you guys are new to my channel, I'm a calisthenic athlete who's in the process of becoming an elite athlete. I've been doing calisthenics for a few years now and I've made a lot of mistakes throughout my journey. I've tried tons of diets and a lot of workout routines to see what works. If you make the same mistakes I did, please leave a thumbs up if you found this useful. And I'll see you guys next time. You got to shock the muscle, shock the muscle, and shock the muscle.